all vegetation that we know of, all farmland crops that are growing. And uh, it is very, very important for the government or relevant authorities to take very, very serious measures mm -hmm. to mitigate uh, uh, against the problem. But what I want to say from the beginning is that uh, there's a link between this invasion and climate change. Right. Climate change, for those who do not know, is the sudden erratic change in normal climatic patterns. For a period of between 25 and 30 years, there's a way you observe. Mm -hmm. Our farmers observe, specialists observe, government observe, how patterns of the weather go. That we have between this period and this period is rainfall, mm -hmm. this period and this period is um, sun, sunshine and probably short rains mm -hmm. and things like that. But what is happening? For the past couple of uh, years, mm -hmm. going to a few decades, there's uh, a change in climate. All right. Quite honestly, this is January. Mm -hmm. Today, I think it's January 12th, 13th. 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 It has been raining cats and dogs since last night. True. This is January, we are supposed to be having, experiencing uh, awesome. a lot of sun. All right. So, this, this erratic change mm -hmm. in the patterns, in the weather, is what causes climate change and it's a very very serious concern mm -hmm. and a lot has been said about it and we will continue to talk about it but it is important for relevant authorities to take action and climate change comes with three aspects adaptation mitigation and resilience so basically what that means is that we need to adapt that if we are having rainfall in January, how are we adapting? How are families, uh, what information are we getting so that we can deal with it? Mm -hmm. Mitigating. Mitigating is, is intervening in the aspects that cause, uh, for which climate change is brought about. For example, locust invasion. We will discuss about the link between climate change and locust invasion. Right. Floods, mudslides in other countries, a lot more snow. Mm -hmm. um, in wildfires, like what we're experiencing in Australia right now. Mm -hmm. So how do you mitigate? Then we have resilience. Resilience now is the mitigation long term. Long -term all right. How do we um, um, deal with it? period of time. How are we able to, to, to deal with, uh, with a certain weather pattern that we've not been experiencing? Mm -hmm. How are we going to be resilient to Tavumilia VP? Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. So back to what you asked me, the link between climate change and, and uh, the locust invasion. I w I w I'd like to take you back uh, a few years ago, back in 2013, mm -hmm. countries in the Sahel and uh, the African Sahel is the belt up there that borders the Sahara Desert and Sub-Saharan Africa. Like you said, I, am, um, I work f f with these people who deal so much with Sub-Saharan Africa. So the African Sahel are the band of countries that are forming up there mm -hmm. along the Sahara Desert at the border. Before we begin Sub-Saharan Africa, we have Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Chad, all the way to Djibouti. Mm -hmm. So these countries up there are, uh, have been grappling a lot of time with locust invasion. Mauritania, for example, Chad, and even Niger are still smarting from the effects of a locust invasion that came for the period between 2003 mm -hmm. to 2013. There was a very, very serious problem at that time. Uh, it was almost declared short of a, a disaster, right. and the United Nations even warned. And also at that time, in 2013, they did warn that this invasion would come to these countries down here. So basically what we are saying is that these countries experienced uh, such an invasion where swarms of locusts set upon crops, vegetation, and you know these countries are, are, are there, up there in the desert area, All right. it's a dry area. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, the effects of that hunger are still being felt to date. So, what is an invasion, therefore? What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. A grasshopper and a locust are two insects that are the same. However, mm -hmm. 
a, a locust has shorter antennae, it's a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. The other uh, characteristics that differentiates between the two is the fact that the grasshopper is a solitary insect. It dwells alone, mm -hmm. all right? It is um, Maybe isolated. Even, even as you continue yes. defining what a locust is, yes. those of you who are posting pictures <laughs> of, <laughs> of individuals assuming they are locusts, please. No, Please, yes, is yes. A, here is the definition of what a locust is. <laughs> yeah, so a grasshopper is a little bit smaller mm -hmm. and uh, it acts solitary. When, when we were young people, there are those things we used to call them or day day, okay. and we would uh, catch them. Those are the grasshoppers on the, gr on the grass. Yeah. But now the locusts, as short antenna is a little bit larger, and then it is. Um, Yes, as you can see, it is a little bit larger than, they, they act in swarms. Okay. So why do they invade? What happens? So there was a lot of erratic rainfall, October, November, December. For the first time, mm -hmm. drought seeking in areas in northeastern in North received a lot of rainfall, Wajia, right. areas like that. So when it rains, then there's sporadic growth of vegetation. Okay. All of a sudden we start seeing grass, the shrubs are growing, acacia trees, and there's so much to eat. So serotonin in this insect's small brain triggers mm -hmm. that, uh, I don't know if it is a, I wouldn't know because I'm not an insect expert, but I wouldn't know if it is is it, it's an instinct mm -hmm. or it is a call to mate, like, you know, the cows and these other okay. mammals and other animals, mm -hmm. but it triggers and then it begins to, to, to it's, it sort multiply, of yeah. begins to multiply. Okay. And then, they, then they be, they, the term they use, they become gregarious. They become active. Okay. Once they become active now, they begin to, to gather in swarms, begin to invade. A swarm can be between five up to 50 million. All right, and uh, since it's a link between uh, with climate change yes. as a country yes. in the East African region, how did we find ourselves here? Not really finding ourselves here because these swarms are coming from up there in Somalia mm -hmm. and the... Is the climatic change in the, in the country, like Kenya for an example, as a result of a human error or something? Climate change as a whole Globally, mm -hmm. uh, well, it's it's uh, we 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 are, we are in an age we we like to call the Anthropocene or anthropo uh, anthropogenic sorry anthropogenic mm -hmm. era or uh, age, whereby the changes in our world, in our globe, in our earth mm -hmm. are squarely responsible. I mean, as as have squarely been caused by. Uh, activity by man. Mm -hmm. Mankind might not really cause uh, the changing of climate rapidly, mm -hmm. but we are a catalyst and a major, major catalyst. Mm -hmm. And basically, the climate change, if you want to understand it in simple terms, because climate change is the phenomena that, that comes out of something else, it is this something else is uh, the warming of the globe. Others are calling it global warming. Others are call, saying it is a hoax. But increase in temperature, uh, which is caused by burning of fossil fuel. And fossil fuel is the fuel, the oil that we use, the, the petroleum, uh, causes greenhouse gas effects, and, or rather the, um, a greenhouse effect whereby a lot of, 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 of heat is trapped in the atmosphere okay. and it cannot go. So what happens? It is concentrated here, just like the way you, you would use a greenhouse to, 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 to catalyze the growth of a certain product or I mean a certain uh, crop. Mm -hmm. So what happens? All this energy that is in, in the atmosphere has to go somewhere. So what happens? Our oceans mm -hmm. absorb it. Mm -hmm. Our soil, our surfaces absorb it. What happens, therefore, is that temperatures spike. And when temperatures spike, for example, in the ocean, are heating up ocean, of course, it's going to change uh, the way the atmosphere uh, 
acts or uh, behaves and with that we begin to see a lot of rainfall why do we see a lot of rainfall because of this heat that is trapped in the ocean, okay. evaporation happens. A lot of moisture is trapped in the atmosphere and it has to go somewhere. So this rain, for example, is something that has come from the Indian Ocean. It was not, it's something that was not expected. And we are, continue, we, are, we, are, we are going to see a lot of this. So to answer your question, we got ourselves here because of many, many years of human activity that is causing a change in our climate. When you burn fuel in China and India and uh, you, you cut trees in Canada and Mao for example mm -hmm. then you interfere all right interfere we inter interfere with the natural nature of things okay before I cut you short you had began mentioning how these insects consume yes. and now we've been experiencing rains yes and of course those North North eastern parts of Kenya they have the greens, uh -huh. that is the food. Yes. Now these insects have come, they will only eat the greens that we have. Uh -huh. How much damage do they cause? Um, we've started hearing reports that uh, the invasion is in Meru. Uh -huh. If uh, I was in a position of authority, I would begin to prepare uh -huh. to declare this a disaster. Of national counties now? Um, sorry? There could be five counties now coming yes, this yes, way. Yes, yes, and they are still coming. Mm -hmm. A locust invasion is a serious thing. A locust invasion can cause drought, untold suffering. Keeping in mind that the rains began in October, which is harvest time, a lot of crop was destroyed in the farms. Mm -hmm. Whatever little that is left is being consumed by this locust. Mm -hmm. We might not have any food to eat for a very, very long time. Uh, and I want to use an analogy, though it is not very, very popular. Mm -hmm. Locust invasion was a plague in the Bible as well. These things eat vegetation, they eat crops, they eat what we are supposed to, to consume, to feed on, mm -hmm. and we remain hungry. Mm -hmm. So, there's a very, very serious matter. The government should uh, do something, mm -hmm. uh, short of declaring it a, a national disaster, because, as you can see, these are millions. Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind this thing, consumes uh, double its, uh, I think half, when it eats, it can eat up to half its own weight. Yeah, actually, according to the report that was released uh, by the CS Agriculture, uh, they can eat uh, one ton and they can eat about one ton of food enough to feed 2,500 people. Yes. Uh, to the extent uh, a locust invasion of this nature mm -hmm. um, or a serious locust invasion mm -hmm. can decimate farms mm -hmm. that sustain up to 35,000 people in a week. Okay. So multiply that. Keeping in mind that if they started at 20 million here in Wajia, mm -hmm. they are still laying eggs, they are still hatching, they are still moving on. And remember, the lifespan of this is between one and one, one and one, one month and one week mm -hmm. lifespan. Okay. So they are rapidly multiplying, and they are in our farms, and they are finishing. Yeah, as they actually, go. I would like us to listen in yes. to what the CS said during the press conference in regards to the uh, locust invasion and how they are planning into how to mitigate them. Yes. Uh, because as, since you have mentioned it's a serious crisis that should be mentioned as a, uh, a crisis to be serious. So uh, let's listen in to what the CS said. That must be fought through a regional strategy to ensure that they are attacked from the arresting habitats. Unfortunately, because of insecurity in some of our neighboring countries, it has been difficult to fight and prevent their migration. We need to be very alert, especially in the evenings. From about four, five, up to six, they can now locate them, because definitely at allowed six, they are going to rest. And at that point, whoever locates them should be able to report their area chief or the village elder. Subsequently, they are going to communicate to their county commissioners. Transboundary pests. 
that must be fought through a regional strategy to ensure that they are attacked from the arresting habitats. Unfortunately, because of insecurity in some of our neighboring countries, it has been difficult to fight and prevent their migration. We need to be very alert, especially in the evenings. From about four, five, up to six, they can now locate them, because definitely at allowed six, they are going to rest. And at that point, whoever locates them should be able to report to their area chief or the village elder. Subsequently, they are going to communicate to their county commissioners. And uh, with our command center now, we are able to know exactly we can send somebody with the enough information to take the coordinates. And that way, we shall be able to hit them immediately. So uh, this is what the CS was saying. Uh, something that is uh, interesting, they rest at six and that's the time to attack them. Mm -hmm. uh, how serious is this? <laughs> it may seem like a joke, but uh, well, even you, if you eat too much, at some point you'll sleep, isn't it? Or you will rest. Okay. And yeah, they fly, or rather they invade and consume and rest so when they are in their latent position mm -hmm. that is the best time to attack okay but now how are we attacking yeah that's the, now the question the question is we, we yes. have seen the, them uh the tear gas being used yes. we've seen others running with uh, some to scare them so yes how are we chasing them or how we will kill them now the only way to deal with this is when, it, like the, the, the minister is saying, when they are in their latency position, when they are resting, mm -hmm. uh, that is the best time to attack. However, you cannot attack using spray handheld mm -hmm. or those, uh, you scare, you scare. You know, if you scare and it leaves this bush, it will go to this other bush. Okay. What you need to do is to, to, to destroy them, to kill them. <laughs> and I want to say something that is very, very important and I wonder who's because he has used the word strategy I don't know who's spearheading this strategy during national days as recent as Jamuri Day on 12th of December we normally see these planes mm -hmm. that are training our uh, KDF pilots and these um, aircraft there are some that even produce an air display of uh, Rangi, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, Bendera, mm, true. The, you know, the green, the black, the white, very, very colorful, wonderful display. We've also read in the press that uh, our country ac has acquired uh, crop dusters that train our pilots. Mm -hmm. An aircraft that is a crop duster is uh, logically saying that these are the aircrafts that use mm -hmm. to spread herbicides. Mm -hmm in large farms. Why can't we deploy some of these resources to deal with this phenomenon once and for all? What we need to do is to ask the people probably who are living around there to move a bit or to, to migrate uh, for a moment, for a few weeks. Right. Then a full-scale attack, even choppers, I think. If, if this, the pesticide is being dropped from above or, you know, blankets, blanket uh, uh, pouring of, of, of pesticide, mm -hmm. I think they would, they would deal with this, this, this uh, the, the mess once and for all. Now, speaking of spraying, uh, we, we are experiencing rains. Can that chemical be effective with the rains? Or I wouldn't know about the pesticide that is relevant to use mm -hmm. and if it, it is soluble in the rain or effective but I would say if it is in powder form, I don't know how, how or in, in, in liquid form, mm -hmm. then it would be prudent, therefore, to use it regardless. But right now, mm -hmm. I don't think there's much rain that's going on up there. Okay. The weather, uh, the, the rains have settled, and it would be very, very easy in, without any interruption. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, uh, these things are also aided to fly or to move with the wind. Okay. So if we know 
where the wind is blowing, mm -hmm. then we could attack probably, uh, anticipate them, mm -hmm. and then deal with them like that. Because they are a swarm. We also attack them mm -hmm. using sophisticated equipment from above, aerial. Yes. Uh, now someone would argue they are in the northeastern and maybe probably the greens out there are the acacias. Mm -hmm. uh, do they have a specific plan that they will invade? And speaking of if they're coming to other parts of the country like Meru, mm -hmm. they grow Mira. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing like an economic crisis? A locusts, that's why they're using the word invasion. Mm -hmm. But invade, mm -hmm. in Kiswahili, if I may say, for, so that we can understand, you don't leave anything behind. Okay. That's why they move. Mm -hmm. They finish. They do not have a, 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 a favorite. Mm -hmm. Probably it says Kumawiki is a favorite, but I don't know. <laughs> but these things, as long as they are leaves, as long as there's green vegetation, mm -hmm. all right, then they will. So, they're in Meru. Uh, in Meru, we have Mogoka and uh, what is this, Mira. Mm -hmm. Of course, if Mira farms, are, 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 uh, if we meet this locust, and uh, that is a crop that this country exports mm -hmm. to these countries and it makes foreign exchange mm -hmm. for, our, for our economy. Of course, it's something, like I've said, uh, like I've told you, um, Hillary, mm -hmm. this thing needs to be declared it's short of a, a, a serious disaster. Uh, no, in, in the report, the CS also mentioned that uh, there's a likelihood they would spread to Uganda. And mm -hmm. they're also working with the authorities in Uganda to ensure that uh, they, they mitigate them from this end. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, other than spring and water view, what else can we do? For now, spring is the best option. You know, it's not a disease that spreads. Uh, it's not an airborne disease, nor is it a waterborne, nor is it transmitted in other way. These are insects that are invading crop. So concerted efforts to meet them before they, they, they recede inward. Because our country is here, Uganda is here. That is not southeast. So if he's saying that they are moving eastwards, then that would mean maybe because of the wind, they are moving that way. As a Kenyan, I would say, well, let it be Uganda's problem. But again, you wouldn't wish it to be any other person's problem. So if we can deal with them fast, quick, because we have the resources. I've said, I've seen the, in this report that um, uh, um, Marsabit and Garissa in the next schedule of aerial spray. Right. Why can't it be all these counties where these things at once? Yes. But more, most importantly, mm -hmm. is to remember one thing, mm -hmm. that because of climate change and the patterns that are changing and the way we are seeing things are moving, Kenya, just like the other countries in the Sahel, mm -hmm. should also put policy. Because now we are officially a locust invasion territorial region. Because if they came from Somalia, mm -hmm. then they're likely to come again another time. So this uh, spraying, I uh, think, to me, appears to be a short-term plan. What, what about in the future? Like he has said, because of insecurity in Somalia, mm -hmm. the source uh, could have been maybe dealt with. I don't know what he meant. Mm -hmm. But you see, an, an, an organism uh, has to have food. If it has food, then it has a habitat. Then if it has a habitat, then it can reproduce. Okay? So, if indeed there's a source where they've come from, I wouldn't know, it would be prudent to deal with them at the source. But I think we have become a source as well. Right. Because I'm thinking these locusts, they are the parasite, and our counties our farms and the habitat and therefore long term is when we've dealt with the problem and uh, the vegetation is gone and uh, the gregariousness of this, the, the insect 
has also dissipated. Therefore, then it would mean they go back to being solitary. And when, because it, there's even a thing that says there's calm before a storm. Mm -hmm. So we can wait for, we can deal with the problem. Then when it is calm, before another hurricane, when we're in the eye of the hurricane, mm -hmm. then we can, you know, destroy these habitats. I mean, not, not habitats, destroy uh, their nesting areas mm -hmm. and uh, the things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Et Etymologists, uh, experts of uh, insect science can tell us you know, what to do about that. Uh, again, uh, they say they, they have a lifespan of six months. Mm -hmm. As swarms, yes. As swarms, they have a lifespan of six months. And already we, have seen, we are seeing a, a swarm. Are they still multiplying or it's just the yes. crop that came? Yes. Well, what I want you to understand is that when this thing moves, it eats. When it eats, it flourishes. When it flourishes, of course it has to do what? Reproduce some more. So yes, that is why they are saying the span of a swarm is six months. Probably whoever who came up with that or whatever research has been done then would mean it would take six months for there to be no food anymore for these things to eat so that then the numbers begin to, to reduce. But uh, ultimately, ultimately, what we may need to do is no joke about it, is to deal with this as if it is an invading army. It's mm -hmm. as if there are troops that are coming to, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, now or it's a war. <laughs> to, to something more interesting, yes. other than the memes that have been posted online mm -hmm. uh, by our fellow citizens, mm -hmm. uh, others believe it's a delicacy. Yes. yes. Now why can't we harvest all this and uh, have a meal? It has been said indeed that it could be a delicacy. Mm -hmm. I mean, but where is it a delicacy? I'm thinking probably Waji and Mandera, Marsibit, those areas, they do not eat these things. Mm -hmm. But they could be harvested. So, are you saying we wait till they reach Kakamega so that? Because <laughs> I think Western <laughs> areas... <laughs> 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 but anyway, but, uh, truth be told, mm -hmm. is it something that maybe can be harvested and uh, we, yes. have, uh, we make money out of it? Yes, yes, they could be... They could be they could be made to to be they could be harvested and eaten. But more importantly, they are rich in protein and some of those rare salts. Uh, and because of that, they could be even be used as animal feed. You know, okay. they could also be. But as a, as a, in the landscape forum, mm -hmm. in a changing climate where landscapes are also changing. And by landscape, what we mean is the land area, where new things are growing, where we are having uh, new things surviving, habitats being restored, and, 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 and um, landscapes being restored. Mm -hmm. What is important to understand is that this is, an, is, is, is something that thrives. Okay. And this is something that can be eaten. And this is something that can be made to be food. And what we are saying is that it is not something, it is an, invas it's an invasion, like an, invas an invasive species that is an enemy. That we need to deal with it. I do not know what it's a locust so that we could introduce something in the food chain that will deal with them. But then the problem would be, mm -hmm. If you introduced something in the hierarchy of the food chain that is higher than the locust, that would eat the locust, what about if that thing multiplies again and we cannot be able to control prob probably a certain bird, a predator bird that eats, survives on locusts, we can introduce that, that's also another way, so that they eat these things. All right. But then when these things are finished, then what do those things eat? So what appears here to be in the chain in the ecosystem is the human being. If <laughs> something that can be well, yes, that is one of that is great. But how do we harvest? But it's not a joke, really. It's not we a joke. It's, it's good. It's very good. Very good food. Yes, we could catch the music nets right. and and we eat them. Mm. Okay, uh, I, I know you said you're not a, um, an expert in insect science, yes. whatever. But now, um, are they harmful? Because someone say in Nairobi. They are like, oh, those the days, are they harmful to the humans? <laughs> you know, the minister said that uh, when you see one, you post. Then they will come. They have, uh, these things have elicited a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and uh, the and many people are on the lookout and uh, we might be joking about these things mm -hmm. but what, from what I know is that no we hunted we, we hunted these things when we were young children those days mm -hmm. no this is not I saw somewhere that the, to the extent that you can pick it and even eat it just like that raw yes raw Okay. We could eat them well. <laughs> that, that's also another. <laughs> that's something I wouldn't do. Maybe as we as we conclude, uh, in terms of uh, global aspect, mm -hmm. we have fires in um, Australia. Mm -hmm. What caused it? Because it's it's something that has been there for months. Okay. Speaking of climate change, yes. What caused this fire? I'll and say I I have I've, I've already said earlier that climate change is something that we are not going back on. Climate change is a science or is a phenomenon that has been existing for the past, it's, it's very new, less than 30 years ago is be, when we begin to notice. But we've had summits uh, yes. for them back yes. about the yes. climate change, including uh, a recent one mm -hmm. where Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General, was saying like, uh, it's now serious, we need to get yes. to a point of yes. maybe ending it. How do we get there? You know, the, the first formal meeting that was done about this and the word global warming was spoken about interestingly enough is here in kenya in back 1977 that was hosted by unep but we begin to have serious meetings uh, in 92 rio declaration that was the forerunner to what we had in the year 2000 as the millennium declaration about climate change to compound all that, what we are saying is that we have enough documentation, we have enough policy, we have enough uh, research that has been done to demonstrate that this is something that we cannot run away from. Right now in Australia, like you've mentioned, mm -hmm. there are fires that are, they are saying 2.3 million hectares of land uh, are, have been burnt, mm -hmm. up to 1 billion animals have been lost. That's to the extent that they are saying the boombat and the koala, which are traditionally Australian species of, 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 of animals, mm -hmm. could be extinct. So many theories have been fronted, but the most probab probable one, they call it the Indian Ocean Dipole. Mm -hmm. And by the Indian Ocean Dipole, it means that there are two competing uh, phenomena in that ocean that there are areas of cold water and areas of hot water the convergence of winds in the ocean are causing that there are some areas that there are areas of higher temperature as compared to other areas so when you your, your land is near an area of cold water then you're likely to have drought Okay. okay, when your oh, your waters are hot and they are evaporating and they are carrying moisture into the atmosphere and the winds are carrying that water into land, we are likely to have rain. So, assuming this is our globe no. and this is the ocean and Kenya is here, Australia is here, our waters are hot or warm and are evaporating mm -hmm. and they are concentrating moisture in the atmosphere, right. which is being carried inland to form rain which is falling drastic serious terrible rain and the difference is happening here because here this cold water is not evaporating this cold water is not becoming moisture it's not being trapped in the clouds and then there's a lot of drought here so this is why the wildfires are and uh, that's what is happening in australia having said that wildfires are caused by something as minute and mundane as the, the a cigarette but you know, you smoke and you throw that thing. Okay. So there's intense drought in this area, and the fires are all over, and they are uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. While at the same time, we have uncontrollable what? Rainfall. Rainfall. Isn't that testament that we have a changing climate? Because there's no balance. True. We've had terrible rains, to the extent where Meleta Rockast. Now, Uku, Iko Jua Kali Kabisa, Nena Choma. Well, wow, that's very serious. Maybe your final words uh, coming back now to Kenya, the yes. locust invasion. Yes. 
Uh, do you feel? Do you feel as the statement by the CS Kenjuri mm -hmm. uh, of agriculture? Do you think we are doing enough? It's been weeks now. Just last night it was mentioned some other parts in Mandera again. Mm -hmm. So we still have a problem. What I want to say is that um, a successful scientific activity is, is through observation. And the only way we're observing, for some of us, is through agents in the media like you, who are beaming and showing what is happening there. We, I'm not in, on the ground mm -hmm. to see the efforts, the mitigation factors mm -hmm. that are being done. I've, they've, I've seen there's a plane that is on standby that is spraying, mm -hmm. but a lot needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is like what I said when I was in the beginning, this is something that needs to be declared a national crisis, short of a what? A disaster. Mm -hmm. And I would say, as, 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 as somebody who is in this area of, of climate change, is that a lot needs to be done, to be written, to be researched. Mm -hmm. This country has a climate change policy. I think we need to, it to be taught in, in, in schools, probably even in the universities, because it is there. We have an agenda. Mm -hmm. And in conclusion, I uh, don't know, do you want me to make my final remarks? Probably yeah, I, I would want you, and as you conclude, please tell me about the Nakuan consultant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, like I've said, we are, we are involved in, in, in research. So what we do is, is international relations, mm -hmm. international development, and climate change. Climate change today has become a science that is a discipline on its own. In fact, there are universities around the world in uh, advanced countries that are teaching climate change as a, as a course. I think in, in our country here, yeah, probably we have it as a bachelor's degree, I don't know. So what we do there is we advise policy, like what I've done here today. We write, we do research on these three disciplines, international relations, international development, and climate change. I, I can talk about locust invasion, and I can also talk about Iran, and I can also talk about uh, how uh, Kenya is 60% that poor, mm -hmm. all right? So at Nakuan, we, we produce reports, okay. we do research, we do trainings, seminars, so that we can sensitize government, regional governments and, and countries, um, individuals, enthusiasts, and people who are interested in these three areas, these disciplines, even journalists, mm -hmm. on what is, uh, is happening and what is emerging. Mm -hmm. And um, we are very, very proud because uh, we even consult for people who are abroad in Europe, like the African thing that we do. It's an organization that is domiciled in Munich, Germany. And what we do is that we advise on African policy on their behalf. Okay. We are on the ground, we are seeing locust invasion, we write reports and tell them about locust invasion, and then from that, that perspective, pedestal, they can be able to, mm -hmm. to see what maybe either invests or whatever. All right, there's a question coming in, mm -hmm. uh, whether killing a locust will have any effect to the environment? No, not really. It is a... Uh, because they, they will spray. Is this a, a oh, pesticide? Oh, example? yes, I know, I know the link. I know the, the perspective for which you're asking. Earlier on, earlier on in the 19th, in the 20th century, the late 70s, I mean the 70s, 80s, we had pesticides that were harmful to both animal and human. You would spray it on cabbage or vegetation, on, on, on whatever, the, the herbicide, or even the pesticide, and it would be harmful. Mm -hmm. But uh, research has, uh, has given us better and newer um, medicines, newer pesticides, herbicides. So I really don't think, or maybe, or maybe, you know, we don't know about this country. So much happens, we to mob by the wrong happen. Maybe sure. they have something that is harmful. But from where I sit right now, mm -hmm. uh, in this age and time, I don't think there's anything, anything that could be harmful. Okay. But of course, there's no chemical that is, is useful uh, when you ingest, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right. Even toothpaste is not good when you ingest. Okay, all right. So, so thank you so much for coming. Yes, thank you. And uh, 
your idea and information in regards to the climate change it's mm -hmm. quite profound mm -hmm. i'm sure back home you have learned something he has been my guest robert nyakunde again a reminder uh, he's quite a person with um uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, profile he's a climate change advisor for sub-saharan africa you african business network based in munich germany is also a climate change a research contributor for the UN's affiliated global landscapes. <coughs> you must be very and uh, traveled man. Thank you so much for coming and back home. Many thanks for keeping us company. I'm hoping you have learned something. And please, you've known now uh, what a locust is. Watch a big picture of to take those memes and uh, make people look like locusts. We are not. <laughs> we are human beings. Thank you so much. My name is Deva Hillary. Stay tuned. Val will be up. Uh, with Monday crash, man crash that is, stay tuned.